G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy. Today we're going to take a look at every club in the league and have a look at their contract situation. So every club has a number of out of contract players at the end of the year and I'm going to go through each an individual club and work out to what extent clubs have a bit of a headache on their hands. Not every club will have headaches as such. So there are some clubs like the Bulldogs and the Swans who probably do have a few out of contract players who are going to garner a lot of interest from opposition clubs. On the other hand, there's clubs like uh, Fremantle comes to mind where their out of contract position is actually looking pretty sweet. In other words, they don't have too many key players that are going to be a headache for them in terms of contracts. Then there's teams like Geelong and Richmond, who I think are an interesting spot with their list management where they've got a lot of older players out of contract. So we're going to go through each of the 18 teams in reverse alphabetical order, and we'll discuss some of the names out of contract. I know it's a little bit early in the season to be discussing like list management stuff this in depth, but at the same time, it's good to have a look at the start of the season to consider like what are the contract priorities going to be for your club and also who's kind of potentially going to be out on the market. So it might be the case, obviously, that all, all the trading and, and free agency stuff, that happens towards the end of the year. But you can guarantee all of these contract negotiations are taking place right now. So we're going to get into it from the Bulldogs all the way through to Adelaide. And before we do, it would mean a lot to me if you considered subscribing to this channel. Great. So let's talk about the Bulldogs. I already just discussed them already. They've got a number of major contract headaches to, to begin with. So the first one is probably Jamari Yugo Hagen. There's a lot of talk, obviously, about him getting interest from clubs like Sydney and Hawthorne. He's not going to be a free agent, so this would have to be a trade. To what extent it's a headache, I suppose, is subjective. It doesn't really seem like to me, in my personal opinion, not based on fact, but in a personal opinion, I don't think Jamari is likely to leave the Bulldogs, but it's still going to be a headache in the sense that the contract negotiation will need a lot of time and focus. Bailey Smith is another one that is possibly more likely to go than stay. If you read the form lines on that one, it just seems to be the case. But again, that is my own personal opinion. Out of contract, not a free agent, so it would be a trade. So the Bulldogs have to consider Jamara, Bailey Smith, and of course, Tim English as well, who does move into free agency and is certainly going to have clubs interested in him now. West Coast has been named as one of those clubs to be interested, but I'm sure it's the case that not only West Coast will be interested. So that's three major players here. And as far as contract headaches go, the Bulldogs might have the most to deal with in this list. By contrast, the West Coast Eagles don't have a lot uh, to really be concerned about, in my opinion. As much talent as there is that other clubs are going to try and pillage. Uh, if I had to pick one, I'd say Liam Duggan might be the biggest, only because he becomes an unrestricted free agent this year, which just simply means the next contract he gets is likely to be the largest of his career, and he has just been made captain. So the odds of him leaving, not so great. But we can talk about a couple of decisions that West Coast have to make on some veteran players, namely Andrew Gaff and Elliot Yo. Out of the two, Andrew Gaff seems more likely to hang the boots up at the end of the year. Elliot Yo could play on, but it depends on his body. So that one will be a point of focus for West Coast. But also keep an eye on Jermaine Jones, who is out of contract this year and qualifies as an unrestricted free agent. I'm not sure why, because he only played five years at West Coast. It could be that he was signed through the supplemental list process. I'm not too sure. But obviously, hails from Geelong. If he can find some good form this year, they may be of interest to an alternate club. Then we'll talk about Sydney. Again, this is another club that I think will have a bit on their plate this year. Logan McDonald possibly most likely to potentially leave. Again, we're only speculating here, but he uh, is out of contract after four years there with Fremantle lurking. That's already been heavily reported. We've also heard talk about Will Haywood being targeted by the South Australian clubs. He becomes a restricted free agent this year, as does Ollie Florent. Haven't heard anything about Ollie Florent potentially leaving, but obviously a big contract focus for the Swans. Robbie Fox also qualifies as a free agent and Errol Goulden and James Rowbottom are all out of contract. So there's nothing to suggest Goulden or Rowbottom are going to leave either, but that's a lot of key players out of contract and it's a big offseason for Sydney. By the way, this True Footy video is brought to you in a paid partnership with BetterHelp. Now, what is BetterHelp? Essentially, it is a platform that connects you with credentialed therapists who are trained to listen and give helpful, unbiased advice. If you're somebody that has been considering starting therapy, I can understand if there's a few things about it that might make you feel a little bit uneasy. Specifically, sometimes the face-to-face -face interaction component of it can seem a little bit intimidating. And also you wanna make sure that you get the right therapist for you. Sometimes the right therapist for you is not in your area. And this is why BetterHelp's good because it matches you with these therapists. And then you can schedule those therapy sessions at a time that is convenient for you over phone call, video chat, or even messaging if that is what's convenient for you. To get started in the process, click the link in the description below or in the pinned comment. It basically takes to a survey, you fill that out, it helps them assess your specific needs. And in most cases, you'll be matched with a therapist within 48 hours. So if you do get matched with a therapist and you're feeling like this isn't quite the right fit for you, you can switch to another one at no additional cost. So if you think you might be someone who could benefit from therapy, consider BetterHelp. Click the link in the description below or go to betterhelp.com forward slash true footy. Now, clicking that link does help support the channel, but it also gets you 10% off your first month with BetterHelp. So you can be matched with a therapist who can listen and help you. 
Please forgive the sudden and subtle drop in lighting quality for the next 60 seconds or so. I have to re-record the St Kilda part because of an audio glitch and not because I forgot them. Uh, let's talk about the Saints. Look, they're in a pretty good spot as well in terms of their contracts, although there are a couple of maybe decisions they need to make with respect to some of these players. So first of all, they do have uh, Josh Battle who will become a restricted free agent. Now he's a pretty good player, pretty underrated actually. Absolutely a big priority to keep. So he's probably their biggest focus. And then some decisions will come around, maybe Dougal Howard. I think there was a few teams floating around. Certainly there were murmurs that he might find a new club and he could be one of those key backs that finds himself out of a team that eventually switches clubs, speculating. But there's a chance that Dougal Howard doesn't stay. They do have some out of contract, slightly older players that I think generally will get contracts. Dan Butler will be 28, so he'll be a priority signing for sure. Tim Membry at 30, I'd imagine he's not close to the end. Mason Wood at 31, I also think he's still playing well. Jimmy Webster out of contract at 31, he's probably the least indispensable out of that lot. Saints fans, let me know what you think, but I suppose there is a chance that he doesn't sign a new contract. But the interesting decisions for me will be around Zach Jones and Seb Ross, two guys that I think could be pushed out of this list and it's a bad time for them to be out of contract. Previously locked in best 22 players. I'm not so sure that that's the case anymore. Seb Ross will be 31 this year. Zach Jones, I think is a couple of years younger than that. So we'll wait and see on those. But with St Kilda's young up and coming talent, I think there's a chance these guys find themselves on the outer. Let's talk about Richmond. I've said this before, but I feel like Richmond are an interesting case study here with their list management. So in terms of out of contract players that are quite important to them right now, Dusty Martin, there's a bit of a murmur that, you know, potentially he goes to the Gold Coast Suns. I've no idea if that's likely. Seems a long shot, but regardless, out of contract. Same thing with Dion Prestia. That rumor has been there in the past. That being said, I have absolutely no idea if there's any legitimacy to that. But then there's a couple of ones that we'll also need to focus on. Liam Baker's out of contract after seven years, and there does seem to be some genuine interest from West Coast in particular. Jack Gray as well is out of contract and I believe a restricted free agent this year and an important player they don't want to lose and I think previously has had interest from the South Australian clubs and then past that you know just a few decisions that need to be made on some guys over 30 so Nan Curvis turns 30 this year restricted free agent I can't imagine a world where he doesn't get another contract at Richmond nor do I think he's going to stay but then you got Camden McIntosh Dylan Grimes and Marlene Pickett the latter two are 33 and 32 so some of those might be let go some of those might stay but it'll be an interesting watch there for Richmond Port Adelaide as well I think are pretty in a pretty good space when it comes to out of contracts this year. Aaliyah Aaliyah is out of contract. He hasn't been at Port Adelaide for that long, but nonetheless, a probably a big contract to be signed there to some extent. Jeremy Finlayson's out of contract as well. I think he's 28 this year. Again, probably not likely to leave, but then they've got to make some decisions on some older guys. So Charlie Dixon turns 34 this year. Travis Polk turns 36. Both of these guys are in their best 22 right now, but maybe this could be their final year. Trent McKenzie also turns 32 this year. I will note that as well. They did re-sign Todd Marshall. Otherwise, he probably would have been their biggest headache. Let's talk about North Melbourne. Cam Zerha is probably the big name because he is a restricted free agent this year with links to Fremantle and Sydney. They're going to come calling. I think previously there's been links to Essendon as well. Definitely shapes as a player I don't think North Melbourne would like to lose. They've got a couple of other out of contract types. Bailey Scott had a great year. He's out of contract, not a free agent. Neither is Curtis Taylor, who is out of contract. Tom Powell and Phillips will also be out of contract after four years. But regardless what happens here, I think North Melbourne are going to be flush for money. Not only do they have a young list, but Taron Thomas also, you know, he got sacked. So I'd imagine they're able to use that salary cap space as well. So North could be big players and just had the one major focus in Cam Zerha. For the Melbourne Football Club, the first player I mentioned is actually not a player out of contract, but Harrison Petty, there seems to be this lurking belief still that he might end up at Adelaide by the end of this year. And sometimes that does happen. Players leave clubs a year before their contract ends so that original club can, you know, maximize their return. I don't know how willing Melbourne are to give up Harrison Petty, but nonetheless, I feel like his name is going to come up towards the end end of this year, but at the same time, Melbourne don't necessarily need to re-sign him this year. Bailey Laurie comes out of contract, is obviously going to be a contract focus for them. Then there's a few older guys. So Adam Tomlinson, he turns 31 this year, won't be a free agent, but again, another player that's been linked to some moves previously. Been told he's a required player and that's why he's still at the club, but we'll see on that one. Lockie Hunter turns 30 this year, probably a player that probably needs to keep his spot in the side to justify another contract. And then there's Ben Brown and Jake Melksham as well. Jake Melksham turns 33, Ben Brown 32. So my point here, being more like these guys could go either way with their contracts and will be an interesting one to watch, I think. Let's talk about Hawthorne. I don't think there's too many retention issues here for Hawthorne. I know that Blake Hardwick does become a free agent at the end of the year. And as far as I'm aware, has not signed a new contract just yet, but I don't think he would leave. Same thing with Connor Nash. He does become a free agent. They've got Giath and Scrimshaw out of contract as well. And it will also be interesting to see the decisions that they make with respect to a few players like Luke Bruce, 34. Obviously, it doesn't look like he's slowing down. Still an absolute gun player, but at 34, 
is of course worth asking the question of. They probably need to be a decision on Wingard. You know, I think he turns 31 this year, obviously coming off that Achilles injury. And then Granger Barras as well. He's out of contract and again, hasn't really been able to thrive at Hawthorne yet. So he'll be an interesting one to watch in terms of a player who could move clubs. GWS will also be pleased. They're in a pretty good position in terms of their outer contracts as well. Um, there's Braden Pruce for a start. He's not a free agent, hasn't been there long enough. But with the emergence of Kieran Briggs, I don't know how willing Pruce is to stay on the list. I mean, obviously, Rucks, they tend to be in demand every offseason. So Pruce could be one to watch this offseason. There's also Harry Perriman, and Isaac Cumming, who both become free agents. Jesse Hogan's out of contract and this could be a big year for Jesse Hogan, so this could also be a decent contract for him. And it'll also be keeping an eye on someone like a Nick Haynes who turns 32 this year. There was talk of him being offloaded in a salary dump last year. It didn't happen. He stayed. It could just be likely that he stays at GWS on a reduced contract. For the Gold Coast Suns, I think they are also in a fairly good spot considering they re-signed their biggest headache in Ben King recently. So that just means that Ben Ainsworth is a free agent who they will naturally want to sign up before too long. Past that, they've probably just got a few over 30s and I'm, I'm not too sure exactly how these players are going to go. So there's Ellis and Sexton and Wits. They're all over 30. That being said, all probably in their best 22. So unlikely to be their final year, but then maybe someone like a Sam Day, he could probably sail off to the sunset at the age of 32 at the end of this year. And then in terms of a couple of young types, I think they really want to keep Ned Moyle on the list. He looks really good as a young Ruckman. There will certainly be interest if he stays out of contract for too long, as well as Alex Davies. Now let's talk about Geelong. Again, not a team that I think is likely to lose anyone, but again, in a very interesting spot with their list management, in my opinion. So they've got three potential free agents this year in Zach Guthrie, Brandon Parfit, and Mark O'Connor. Pass that, they've got contracts extensions. There's a contract year for Max Holmes, Ollie Henry, Tyson Stengel, Jack Bowes, and Jai Clark. Could imagine they'd want to keep all of those, and obviously none of those strike me as players who are likely to leave, but obviously the more out-of-contract players you have, particularly when some of those will probably require a pay increase, the flow under that will be interesting. And then there's also the following senior players out of contract. Patrick Dangerfield, Reece Stanley, Zach Tui, Mitch Duncan, Gary Rowan, and Cam Guthrie. They're all 32 to 35 years old. So I guess what I'm saying here is obviously Geelong have a lot to work out here while they've also been linked to trying to get Bailey Smith in, and I'm sure they can do it. There's probably going to need to be some salary gymnastics here to balance all of these players. And I'm sure, you know, one to maybe three of the senior players that I just mentioned there might retire. Let's talk about Fremantle. Obviously a team that hasn't had great retention in previous years, but they're in a really good spot. Possibly the best spot in terms of outer contracts of anyone on this list. So the biggest probably headache I had for them was Sean Darcy, and that happened over the offseason. He's re-signed for them, which means the other biggest concern is probably Ethan Hughes as an unrestricted free agent, and I imagine that's not going to come up as a problem for them. Matt Tabin is at the age of 31. Obviously, I think it's probably more a big year for him. Could he find his way off the list at the end of the year? Probably fallen out of favor, it's fair to say. Same thing with Sam Sturt, who is a former first round draft pick that's passed four years now. I think this is his fourth season, and could be another low cost player to move clubs if he can't stay in Fremantle's team this year. Then we're up to Essendon, and this will also be a big offseason for them, uh, certainly in terms of some of the names out of contract, obviously investing heavily in the free agent space last offseason. They've got one of their own this year, and Andrew McGrath re signed. Now, I don't think it's likely that he leaves, but obviously probably going to be the biggest contract of his career as well. In fact, when Archie Perkins comes out of contract this year from his round one performance, it could be a bit of a breakout season. Sam Durham and Jai Caldwell are other players who have played four seasons and will probably require a bit of a prize hike. Then there's a few other senior players and I'm interested to see what they do with these players. So Dylan Shield, not a free agent, but out of contract. There was talk of him moving clubs at the end of last year. Jake String is in a contract season. I think he kicked four goals in round one. So can he earn another one? I reckon he probably will, to be honest. But then there's Dyson Heppel, who is 32 and might might retire this year. Let's talk about the Pies. Their offseason looks potentially interesting as well. So in terms of free agents, it's probably just Will Hoskin Elliott. He turns 31 this year. So probably not going to have too many clubs coming knocking. But then there's some older players that uh, we all know about in Pendlebury, who's 36, side bottom 33, and how 34. Now, none of these players look like they should retire by any stretch of the imagination, particularly Pendlebury. Like, that guy can play till he's 40 at this rate. But another club linked to Bailey Smith, and if they're in a position to try and, you know, recruit from the outside and try to improve their list, it'd be interesting to see what happens with some of these older players who are, you know, 
out of contract. Nathan Murphy is another player out of contract. That will be an interesting one as well, obviously. I think he's still got some lingering you know, impacts from the uh, concussion that he sustained. So hopefully he's all good and that he can win another contract. As for Carlton, they're in a pretty good spot as well. I think their main out of contract type is Jack Martin. Martin's about 28 now, only been at the club five years, so not a free agent. So a club would have to potentially trade. Again, there's an absolute no evidence that he is going to be up for trade or anything like that. I'm just more saying that that's probably the most likely. Um, then there's Caleb Marchbank, who I think becomes a free agent. And again, not really a serious chance to leave. Some smaller contracts they've got are always dirt and Cottrell, some of these role players. But for the most part, their contract status generally is looking pretty sweet. Then we move to the Brisbane Lions and they've got a couple to consider here. Uh, namely, Hugh McCluggage, one of the biggest free agents on the market this year. And until he's signed up, that speculation is going to continue. Although my gut feeling is I don't think it's likely that he leaves. And then there's also his good mate, Jared Berry. They both joined the club at the same time. Therefore, they both become uh, restricted free agents at the end of this season. But considering their retention has been pretty good, I don't know if that's too much of a concern Concern, but it's an interesting list balance here with Brisbane. Obviously, some highly rated, talented youth coming up. So, does that mean that Dane Zorko, who's 35, Jared Lyons, 32, could this potentially be their last year? Brisbane fans, by all means, let me know what your opinion is on that. And then there's also Lincoln McCarthy, who's 31, who, to be fair, doesn't look like he's close to retiring. And finally, the Adelaide Crows, again, another club that probably don't have too much to worry about. There has been a link with Elliot Himmelberg joining his brother at GWS. I think that kind of almost happened last year, but Adelaide decided to keep him. He becomes a free agent at the end of this year and it could be a move to GWS on the cards. Then they've got a few other players out of contract. McHenry, Cook, Keys. As far as out of contract types go, Adelaide are looking pretty sweet, although they will need to make some decisions on Rory Sloan, who will be 34, and Brody Smith, who is 32, as to whether they stay. There you go, guys. That is my summary of all the, the main contract headaches, I suppose, or focuses for each club this offseason. Again, I know it's early to be thinking about this stuff, but it's good to know who your team has out of contract, and therefore, it kind of helps you notice when those players haven't signed contracts, and the later it goes in the season, yeah, sometimes it can be a little bit concerning. But anyway, hope you got something out of this video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.